Hey flower letter friends and welcome to a very long overdue love letter from Hanny. Today is a very special day, at least it is to me because <laughs> it was it's my birthday um, and so I just wanted to make one of these and um, get on here and just share some thoughts with you and then um, share kind of something that Mike and I are, are wanting to do to kind of help celebrate my birthday with you um, and that uh, I'll announce that at the end but today I wanted to talk to you about this idea that it's okay to not be okay um, that's uh, something that I've been having to think a lot about this year in particular um, because there's been a portion of this year a big portion of this year where I have not been okay um, and I think that it's important to like share uh, these experiences with people because I know that I am not the only one. And in my life, while I've been going through really difficult experiences, it's been the people who've been brave enough to share their own experiences that have given me courage and have given me the determination to keep moving forward and to keep believing that there is a light at the end of, uh, of sometimes a very dark tunnel. And, um, I wanted to share this because so many of you have been brave enough to share your stories with us and it's been so motivating for us to continue doing what we do and to continue creating stories that are full of light and, and full of um, hope so that uh, we can continue hopefully helping you along in your own journeys. Um, so I come from a large family um, there are nine of uh, nine children, um, eight girls and one boy, and um, it was not a happy home. It was it was not a happy home at all. It was very uh, there was a lot of abuse. Um, there was a lot of neglect, and a lot of it. It made it very difficult to um, believe in uh, individual worth in myself um, because of the way that we were treated growing up. Now, for anybody, I love my parents. I want them to be happy and this is not um, in any way to um, harm them uh, because I know that uh, we're we're a part of generational abuse. It wasn't just um, it wasn't just them. They learned it from somewhere else. And so I've spent a lot of my adult life uh, being determined to be a transitional character and if you don't know what that is in in lines of, of um, unhealthy behaviors a transitional character is someone who stops it stops it with them and it and it, it, it stops in the in the line there's no longer being passed down from parent to child and so <clears throat> Mike and I have been uh, very deliberate in how we've parented our children and how we've um, wanted to stop this from from moving forward thankfully mike comes from a very wonderful loving um, amazing family and i've been so thankful to be a part of it and to be blessed by his parents and his siblings um, because they've taught me a lot about love and sorry about unconditional love because in my home it was very conditional. And um, so in my home environment, I learned to work very hard to prove that I was worthy of love. Um, that has resulted in the last 20 years of trying to process that um, trauma that, that took place in my home growing up. Um, and even though we were, Mike and I were, were very deliberate in stopping these things, um, the uh, consequences of my, my parents' actions still, I still had to process them. I still had to go through them. And, um, you know, going through the stages of grief, my parents divorced when I was 18. And in a lot of ways, that was a, a really big blessing because um, for me, it, it was kind of this breaking open of this very unhealthy environment that enabled me to see what was wrong and what was unhealthy and then and then able be able to do my part in, in stopping it and fixing it. And of course, before that, I, I didn't know that other families 
weren't like this. Of course, I saw different environments with my friends, but um, but never enough to really um, know that that there was something seriously wrong with the way that that me and my siblings were raised. Fast forward uh, 20 years, and a lot of um, depression and anxiety and a, a, a big bout of about 15 years worth of dealing with post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, we came to this year, which has been uh, very unexpectedly transformative for me. Um, it became very clear this year that it was time for me to, if I wanted to really and truly spare my children from being exposed to the environment that I was exposed to, that, that we needed to take a step away permanently from, from my parents. And it was a really difficult decision for me to make. Um, if you've been in any kind of similar relationship where abuse is involved, it's, it's very difficult to, to step away. So I had, had been meeting with a therapist for the last uh, over a year, which was really difficult for me to get to that point, to trust someone enough to um, share the things that had gone on in my home. I'm really sorry, I was not planning to get emotional. But um, through the last year, she, she's been a huge part of helping me to see how that's um, affected me and my life and to identify it for what it is. And um, they say that the truth will make you set you free. And sometimes the truth is a very hard truth that sets you free. And, and I think that for, for the last 20 years, I've been in denial and she helped me to see the truth that that this was what happened to me and this was what happened to the people that I love so much and my siblings and that I, I couldn't break this cycle in, indefinitely by continuing to be exposed to the abuse that, that has continued throughout our adult lives. Um, so this summer uh, Mike and I made a really difficult decision to um, step completely away from my parents and and remove them remove ourselves from their lives and them from ours so for the last uh, couple of months four months when we're almost at the end of the year so it's been about four or five months um, I haven't been okay it's been really difficult but at the same time I haven't been okay for the last 15 years so <laughs> this was an improvement because at least I was identifying what was causing me to be so sick and so, um, you know, just trapped in, in a lot of mental turmoil, um, which was definitely causing me a lot of physical turmoil. And, and it's, it's amazing how that sort of manifests itself physically in your body. Um, and I didn't realize it. I had no idea that, that mental turmoil could cause physical symptoms. and. As we've stepped away and I have gotten in a much more peaceful place um, and that's what it was all about it was it, it was never about anger or lack of forgiveness it was about just seeking peace the ability to be in a safe place in my life without the constant danger of being uh, emotionally reminded of of um, where I came from and so while I've been doing all of this for the last 20 years, um, the flower letters came along about three, three years ago, so 2020. And I want you to know that they have helped my life in a very similar way that, that so many of you have shared that they've been helping your life. They have given me a purpose, uh, an opportunity to take my own experience of being in some fairly dark places, really dark places <laughs> for a long time, and be able to do something to help brighten the lives of other people who are going through their own version of that, um, they call it in writing, the dark night of the soul. Um, and we all have them, we all have our own version of that. and. Um, so many of you have shared how the flower letters have given you that little light at the end of the tunnel to look forward to. And I'm so thankful that 
that that has worked in your lives in the way that it has worked in my life in being able to create them and to be able to um, share them and and to see then how they have brought light into other shined light into other dark places for a lot of people so all that being shared with you um <laughs> i mike and i wanted to um share with you what we we wanted to do to help celebrate my birthday with you and that is i i am sure as many of you saw the email that came out from mike or from the flower litters uh, a while ago asking you to submit um candidates that you felt could use the flower letters in their life that that they're they were going through something difficult and um and that they could use a little bit of a light at the end of the tunnel and we got a lot of responses and we're really so thankful for that and today since i am for turned 41 we are going to send out 41 subscriptions to um of these people that you submitted and and hope very much that they receive this gift um, and that it makes their life just a little bit their burdens just a little bit easier to bear and I know the flower letters it's it's not like you know this it, it's an it's a great thing and and it does lift burdens and we know that it's just a little light but it is a little light and that is what makes all the difference when you are in those dark places and so thank you so much for submitting names and for sharing your stories with us and i hope uh, that my sharing my story with you um, helps you not feel alone if you happen to be going through something similar or just in happen to be going through something really difficult that you know that that you're not alone and that people see you and that they are rooting for you and um, praying for you to be able to um, get through it successfully and to come out the other end of it um, more enlightened, more empathetic, and, and to a place much brighter than you could have ever imagined. That's what's happened in my life. And, and you all are such a big part of that. Um, being able to do the flower letters, this is, it's, uh, it is a much brighter place than I ever imagined that I would be, and especially be able to be here with Michael, who is my best friend and who has been by my side through all of this and has been an extraordinary support and constant um, source of strength and love for me. So that being said, um, happy birthday to me. <laughs> and hopefully you get to have your version of happy birthday with with me um, by experience, some of you um, experiencing the flower letters and, and also those of you who submitted knowing that those people that you thought of and, and their names that you submitted to us um, that you've helped ease that burden as well. So I hope you have a wonderful day and I hope that you feel light in, and hope in your life. And um, thanks for catching me in this vulnerable moment. So <laughs> take care everyone. <laughs>